Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the Daily Market Insight for Wednesday, the 25th of October. All right. Now, what's happening in the market? The dollar rises as US business activity ticks up in October. Well, there's actually a, a key piece to this, and it's actually the weakness in the UK and the EU or German uh, PMI data, right? This is actually just a pure, natural, fundamental release uh, where you connect the dots. Now, let me just explain that because this is uh, like... Let me just come over to the charts just quickly, because if you looked at the charts and you're seeing what's going on, you probably think there's really excess volatility, okay? Especially on euro and sterling. Obviously, if euro goes, the dollar index goes as well. But across a lot of the other pairs, there wasn't much there. And why is that? Well, this is basic uh, trading 101. The um, And let me just explain what I mean by that. The Okay, the EU manufacturing and services data, Okay, weaker than forecast, even the German services PMI number, weaker than the uh, forecast there as well. And then that that sort of settles into the market. So there's a sort of slightly weaker tone here on the UK manufacturing. Well, actually, that was a little bit more, but the services data, a little bit, just a fraction softer. And then you get the uh, US numbers coming out here, a little bit stronger than the forecast, right? The move, does it warrant... The outcome, not not much, right? There's hardly much difference between the strength of the US numbers compared to the forecasts and the weakness in the UK and EU data. But what it shows us is when you do come back and have a look at the charts, how uh, susceptible the markets are to volatility at the moment, right? So that's a nice clean out of the top side, take out a lot of short positions and they're straight back on with this data. So what we're seeing is, and you're going to recognize this, that particularly euro and sterling are sort of moving around quite freely, right? So if you are trading euro and sterling, just adjust your trade plan because you are going to get a, a much bigger move and the market is moving with the fundamentals. And that's a really good thing because we can see exactly what's going on, right? Now, that's uh, where we were. Now, let's just really focus in on what's coming up because we've got a couple of key events today to really dig our teeth into. And what I'm talking about is the Aussie inflation numbers, okay? And also really the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Well, I don't know about sinking your teeth into the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. There's no sort of uh, change of rates expected. Um, if anything, there's a lot of talk about the government trying to influence the central bank, don't raise rates and all this sort of crap, right? So we're just gonna keep an eye on that. The key parts down the bottom here, we've got uh, Christine Lagarde, the ECB president and Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, speaking later today. Uh, and obviously, don't forget the Bank of Canada press conference. But if you're looking for a fundamental release to get your teeth stuck into, right? Actually, the US new home sales, that's that could come into play. But the Aussie CPI, now let me sort of dig into this to give you a real detailed explanation of what I think is uh, how this is going to play out. The, um, yeah, let me get my pen here so if i just come back into looking at uh what's going on on the aussie right let me just come over the charts let's just start with the charts because you need to sort of be weighing up exactly what's going on technically first of all and then you can piece together where the best opportunities are now on an hourly basis the aussie is tracking down if you look on the dailies right you can see a very clear trend to the downside even the weeklies and the monthlies right this thing is Tracking downside. There's a lot of things wrong with what's going on. Um, rates are higher, but the currency is lower. So it's going to hit a roadblock at some point, and it could be anytime soon. Oops, let me just get rid of that stuff there. Now, okay. So this is, and looking at the crosses, right? So if you look at the crosses here, let me just clear those drawings. You can see potentially by taking the US dollar out of the equation, it can make things a little bit clearer, right? Euro Aussie, okay, right now it's tracking to the downside, but we have seen a significant range to the downside already today. This fundamental release will reinvigorate and you could see Euro Aussie definitely go uh, have another big move to the downside. But at the same time, right, think about there's a potential chance for you're at a great level to be buying if the, um, if the Aussie CPI numbers come out weak right, then Euro Aussie is going to shoot to the top side. So will Sterling Aussie, uh, Aussie CAD. We've got a, a nice resistance level here as well. 
And uh, Aussie Swiss, well, yeah, it could definitely come back to the top side. Aussie Kiwi, the widow maker, I'll probably leave that alone. There'll be some stop losses above 95.40 in Aussie yen. But, you know, playing with dollar yen, there's probably a lot of sellers up there as well. So what you have to work out is, like, come back to the number first, right? If you come back to the number, like, we can work out exactly what's going on as far as the trends go here on the Aussie, right? Overall, against the US dollar, it's going down. When you look at the other instruments at the moment, uh, we saw weakness in the euro yesterday, weakness in sterling, right? So... Aussie against those pairs at the moment is inflated. We get that weakness in the Aussie CPI number. You should expect a correction in those two instruments, the same sort of length of what we just saw, right? It's an easy trade back to the top side where it will correct. Don't forget, Euro and uh, Sterling definitely moving with the fundamentals. Um, but in all seriousness, right, and I'm not really necessarily into gambling, I like to focus on the side that is most likely. Right. And that to me, that's a higher inflation number. But so these things here could potentially go either way. Right. And it really does set us up for potentially um, almost like an OCO breakout. Right. <laughs> and that's, I know that's sort of like gambling, but to me, the, the look at the trend, look where the pressure is. That's your bigger trade. And on the other side, you can have a smaller position to potentially capture a move, um, whether it's strong or weak. Right. So, now, how do we work that out? Well, if you come back to, and I know I'm bouncing around here, just stick with me. The uh, If you look at the, the the Aussie inflation numbers, now this sort of bugs me a bit because, wait, wait, screen am I on? Sorry, wrong screen. Um, if you have a look here now at the Aussie inflation numbers, now traditionally we had one number, right? And, oh, well, we had one number, but it was quarter on quarter, year on year. These two numbers here, that's all we had like forever. And then the RBA, as things got a little bit tricky through the global financial crisis, right? They started bringing out this weighted mean. Now we're going through a, a, a different situation. And now we've got uh, the CPI excluding volatile items, food and fuel and travel, right? So that's an extra number we need to look at. So you're looking at this and going, well, what the hell are we, are we supposed to be trading off? Well, I'm going to be honest, I'm not even actually sure, right? Obviously, you look at the high, historically high impacting numbers, which are these ones. Okay, if I just clear the screen here, like these ones here are the high impacting. Now, these were never the, the top numbers. It was these ones here, okay, 6% and 0.8%, and okay, quarter on quarter. But now, you know what, this is where it becomes a little bit more convoluted because now we're dealing with, Okay, what is the central bank focusing on? Well, they've got their own numbers, of course. Then there's the the uh, the Bureau of Statistics have come out with the CPI excluding volatile items. To me, they're looking for an excuse not to raise rates. Like, what well, one? There's about six different varieties, five or six different varieties of CPI numbers here. This does not make it easy as a trader to work to work out. Right, if we if we get high inflation numbers. Uh, what are we looking at? Is it the 6%, the 5.5% um, or the 5.5% up here on year on year as well? So just be careful with what you're, when you are assessing if these numbers are strong or weak, okay? Like the only real thing that can happen, okay? If say inflation came out at 6 point, say 2%, it's above all those numbers, right? And that's, this is like trading the non-farm payrolls. If it's above all those, yeah, Aussie goes up, right? At the same time, if we look at the other situation, right, 5.5 is a low here. Really below, you know, 5.5, say 5.4 or below, okay, it's below all those numbers and Aussie will go down. That's how you can be safe, right? Otherwise, what you've got to do, it's very similar to the non-farms, which is why you would never go in with huge risk is you've got to like assess each of these. Okay. Is it lower than 5.5 or above? Is it uh, above six points or below or above 6%? And then you've got the RBA's weighted mean numbers. Is it above or below those? Right. And now if you get a mismatch, like uh, this is, this is exactly what's going to be going through every trader and every bank 
who is, is sitting there go, say we get a number big print here, we get a, we get a low print excluding fuel and food, that could really mess things up, right? So like I was digging deep into this going, okay, there's got to be some sort of rhyme or reason here to what's going on, but this makes it exceptionally tricky, right? So to me, straight away, I'd be reducing my trade size because I don't have control of the risk. Well, I will about 10 seconds afterwards, after I can have a look through the numbers, okay? And that's where the potential opportunity may come, right? The um, If I just come back across here, there's, there's a couple of other things we can actually have a look at to try and work out what's the overall market thinking about these uh, opportunities, right? So if you're looking at the um, the, the risk, uh, what have we got here? So the um, looking at the overall options market here, right? So let me just get my pen. The old service here has changed the way they've done things. The risk reversals, right? So the market is one month to three months still favoring a downside move in the Aussie, right? A little bit of correction there at the end of uh, yesterday. But you know what? The overall sentiment for the Aussie is down. Now, I was talking about the US dollar, a bit of a mismatch with the bonds and what the US dollar was doing Monday. Now, does it look like the Aussie market is short Aussie? It does, but it's not the same outlook that we had with the US bonds and the US dollar on Monday. To me, it's it's like things aren't going super well down here. The, the Aussie economy is choking and the way they, they report the CPI could be the problem, right? If they're raising uh, interest rates, um, if the central bank raises interest rates, well, we could have a situation where the housing is a big component of the, um, and I've just put it in the Discord here before, housing is is, is probably the biggest component, let me just get my pen, uh, of the CPI basket, right? 22%. Now, housing costs, because of interest rates being so high, is through the roof, right? So if they raise rates again, they're actually adding towards the CPI number. And this is what there's pressure on the central banks, like in, in Bank of Canada also talk about them. If you raise rates, you're actually in like directly, not indirectly, directly putting more pressure on the higher CPI. So this is it's almost like unique uh, economic conditions, which the central banks have been dealing with since the global financial crisis in like 2008, 2009. So do the central bank actually raise rates? That's that's like the question I'm sort of looking at. And you know, I don't know. I don't think they will. But, and that sort of leads me to the conclusion that, you know what, there's one trade here that is uh, like, to me, like a no brainer, right? If I just come over here, get the uh, this sort of new Aussie page up, right? The trend is down. All the, the performance of the Aussie is down. The, um, like next year, yeah, the, the, uh, Analysts and all those punters, they sort of ask for an answer. They're all expecting the Aussie to be higher, but that's primarily around the US dollar. They, they think the US dollar is going to peak and the US dollar is going to fall. So it's not really Aussie economics that's going to pick up. It's the US dollar that is going to fall. And that brings us back to, okay, so if we don't have a very clear understanding of, of what's going on, as I said, like if you wanted to, to have a bit of a, a gamble here, well, there are opportunities on the uh, Aussie here. Let's get that pen working. Like, yeah, is there pressure on the downside? Yep. But you know what? This is like a, like a bit of a, like going to the casino. Like if the number basically comes out strong, right? Aussie euro will dive. If it comes out weak, euro Aussie goes up. Same with sterling uh, Aussie as well, because those two pairs are moving around quite a lot. Now, if we get a weak Aussie print, Aussie cat is at a great level to be selling up towards resistance. If we get a really strong print, well, then we've got a resistance line to work with on the top side there. And you know what? If you if you want to really have a crack, you could jump in to Aussie N if we get a strong Aussie inflation number. But the problem is, right, we have to wait and see what the number is because we've got four or five different or six different varieties of CPI numbers. So that if you're using pending orders, you might get kicked in and then flushed out as the market sort of whips around and goes like, what are we, what are we looking at? It's almost like you, we've got too much choice to really make a clear instant decision. So to me, we've got to wait. You've got to wait for the number to drop. 
you give it 10 or 20 seconds and we'll know the answer. Now, we all know that's not ideal because we lose track of where the market is right now. Um, and, but think of this, just think like the way the market's behaving and where, where the trend is, it's easier. If the trend is down, right, that's our easiest trade. Now, do we have a likelihood of a, a weak Aussie CPI number coming out? Well, I think it's a, a stretch. I don't think we'll get it, but that's the easiest trade. Okay, so if we get weak CPI numbers, then Euro, Aussie, Sterling, Aussie, top side, Aussie, CAD, downside, uh, uh, Aussie, yen, down, and Aussie, Swiss, down, right? That's that's the safe trade, okay? So, but with the variety of numbers coming out, if you're looking at going in with pending orders, well, you could do it. Just cut your position up. Like, say, for instance, you're trading 10 lots. Now, if you were using pending orders on a key release like this, like if there wasn't so many CPI varieties, I would definitely be loading up both sides on a lot of these things. But because we've got the discrepancy between all the various CPI numbers, um, if I was trading 10 lots, I'd probably go in with like three, right? Or five on uh, a weak number, right? And a, and a strong number, well, maybe I'd just sit back and watch and see what happens because you've got to see, as I said, if all the numbers come out weak, well, we're going to get a move, right? And it's going to go straight down. If all the numbers come out strong, well, we're going to get a move. But we've got to like assess now a whole basket of CPI numbers. Like a, this is seriously a basket case. Um, so anyway, it's, it sucks, right? You take out this number, you take out all the numbers and the market focuses just on one number, right? You know exactly what the core market is doing on the release of these numbers. And then we trade and you trade aggressively. But right now with the variety of numbers here, okay, it's very hard to really rip in and hit the market hard when we've got another bunch of different variety of numbers and we don't really know how the major players are gonna act. This is the same thing with technical analysis. When we have clear trend lines, you know exactly what the market's going to do. So you know what to, what to expect. Here, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what to expect because of the different numbers coming out. So, you know what? And I know that's not exactly helpful because if anything, like I've done, you end up going in circles going, well, what do I do here, right? To me, the overriding factor is the uh, is the Aussies going down, right? And that's what we want to sort of focus on. The uh, If I just come back over here to... my uh, uh, main sort of currency template here, keeping it a close eye on the Aussie. It's a bit of up down at the moment. Obviously, this is going to change. If we get strong numbers, this will all uh, be go blue. If it comes out weak, obviously, all go red. And then you could jump in and work out what's going on, looking for some levels of retracement or looking for it to go down, etc. Don't get suckered in to trading uh, when we when you don't know the outcome with a with a whole. Uh, a arrangement of numbers basically right and this is so this sort of level of analysis is what the uh the guys at the banks will be doing on a release like this okay they go through their charts they look technically across the board at all the various instruments ideally what you want to be doing is focusing in on one instrument that you are very confident in okay what you're, you're confident with now is it the Aussie against the US dollar? I don't know. If we get really strong numbers, yeah, the Aussie will go up, but it just doesn't feel right. But don't let your emotions dictate that. Probably buy Aussie if it goes up or look for, for the best cross if you do get a strong number, right? And this is this is the two toing and froing. Usually the trading opportunity should stand out like a sore thumb. Like the market's geared up this way. We've got technical levels. That's what I'm doing. I don't necessarily have that uh, uh, frame of mind just at the moment. And the Bank of Canada interest rate decision is going to be tricky because it's really going to come down to the statement and the press conference. No change of rates expected. Okay. And just looking at the market at the moment, uh, the futures, okay, down, right? Are we seeing a risk-off profile at the moment? No, right? Now, the, the major currencies have just reset. Um so it's not exactly there. The yields, well, they're lower than where they were the other day. 
So the US dollar is out of the equation at the moment. The, the major instruments are working around what's happening in the other currencies. This is where the Aussie gets a chance. Unfortunately, it's a little bit convoluted with the uh, the way the data's being presented to us. All right, so do I have a, an overriding uh, feeling? You know what? If When it comes down to trading the Aussie and looking at the situation, I'm just going with the overall trend, right? And if I was looking for that, to me, the trend is down. That's the smartest play. And I'll be looking for a weaker number to, to get into the trade. I mean, this is a not exactly an easy chart, but everything sort of suggests it's going down. And the crazy thing is, just to finish, the CPI numbers may be printed higher, but it may have a negative impact. But after the number comes out, the immediate response from a strong number will be a spike higher. And then to me, it goes down. But we have to uh, wait and see how that plays out. We have to wait to see how all these numbers that they've made up, how they how they print, right? All right, guys, tricky one. By the, by the way, you can see that I've analyzed that. There's no clear defining standout. Uh, if you want to gamble, of course, you can rip into the crosses. Just be careful with those pending orders because, as I said, the uh, there could be discrepancies across the different numbers. You may get one strong, one weak, and that could really end up seeing the Aussie jump up 40 points, down 60 points, and back exactly where it is. We won't know till after the number. 10 seconds after, you'll have a good idea of what's going on. Right? I know you'll miss the initial entry, but you'll also potentially save a few bucks by getting it wrong, trying to guess the outcome. All right, guys, good luck. All the best. Cheerio.